A woman in Ohio has been convicted of assault after she threw a Chipotle burrito bowl at a Chipotle employee. In fact, you see it in the video, it's very clear, easy case to prove here. Now on November 28th, Judge Timothy Gilligan of Pharma Municipal Court in Ohio sentenced Rosemary Hain, who's 39 years old, after she was found guilty of one count of assault. Initially, Hain was to pay a fine and serve 180 days in jail with 90 days suspended. However, the whole reason why we're even talking about this story today is because of the unusual sentencing option that the person convicted of assault was offered here and she accepted it. So at the sentencing hearing, the judge Gilligan told Hain that she could cut her jail sentence down by 60 days if she agreed to work at least 20 hours per week at a fast food restaurant for two months. And again, she accepted this. Hayne reportedly apologized to the court and the Chipotle worker, her name is Emily Russell, and said there was no excuse for her behavior. But she added that she was not happy with the way her food was prepared. So obviously, I mean, you don't like the way your food is prepared, you gotta throw the burrito bowl at a poor worker, right? Obviously, I'm being sarcastic there. Um, Hayne said, if I showed you how my food looked and how my food looked a week later from that same restaurant, it's disgusting looking. <laughs> You're not getting it, sister. She's not. And then Judge Gilligan responded with, I bet you won't be happy with the food you're going to get in the jail. Damn, mm -hmm. Judge Gilligan regulating. Okay, you are now on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> it's not working out nicely. No, 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 Gilligan's awesome. So Gilligan also had this like banger of a line. Gilligan continued to be pretty sassy with um, you know uh, Hain here, um, saying that this is not the real housewives of pharma or, or Parma, I should say, not par pharma. Yeah, I was like, how did Big Pharma get involved in this story? <laughs> this is the real housewives of uh, Parma. Gilligan also told Hain that he wanted her to work at a fast food restaurant to teach her a sense of empathy and to deter others from this type of behavior. So, all right, let's have a discussion about this because when I first saw this story, it bothered me. It bothered me that that was an option for this perpetrator's punishment. Because to me, working at a fast food restaurant, working in the service industry, that it, the, these are people who are working hard, making an honest living. And I think it sends the wrong message to punish people by sentencing them to working at a fast food restaurant. And I was worried about how the workers would perceive this. But I've kind of changed my mind after hearing from the workers. I'm curious what you think. It was an interesting take that you had. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't occur to me, but the minute you said it, I was like, "Oh, yeah, that is a weird message. I'm not sure that I like that message. There's, it's a noble profession. There's no reason not to do it. Now, obviously, there's you know you want to get paid more and more as you rise up. Uh, we all get that. We're not trying to be Pollyannish about it. But at the same time, there's nothing wrong with uh, being a fast food. Uh, workers, not so, at all. Yeah, yeah, but I do agree with the judge saying that it, he's doing it so that she develops some empathy for people. So that's a really solid way of looking at it. So I'm a little torn on it. Look, I, I have to say, there's definitely truth in that people who have worked in the service industry are more understanding toward others who work in the service industry. So it'll take a lot for me to get upset or angry with bad service, right? Because I just know what it's like and I know what it's like when you've had a terrible day, it is abusive. When I worked at a, a coffee shop, a coffee bean and tea leaf, uh, there was a woman who threw a hot latte at me because she didn't like the way it was prepared. Now, I didn't even think to press charges, I was in college at the time, um, but it's awful. People are incredibly abusive and I think when you experience what it's like to work in this industry and take that abuse day after day, you might be a little more empathetic. And by the way, the judge also gave some additional reasoning for this sentencing option saying, quote, why should city taxpayers pay for her and feed her for 90 days in jail if I could instead teach her a sense of empathy? I really like that statement. Now, um, it's unclear which fast food restaurant she'll be working at. Um, I don't think she's gonna be paid since this is part of her punishment, but that hasn't been clarified in any of the reporting. Um, it was only reported that she would receive jail credit.
And let's go back to Russell, the worker who was um, assaulted by this woman. Um, she's no longer working at that Chipotle due to the anxiety she's been suffering since that attack. But she said this about the sentencing. I just didn't want her to get a slap on the wrist like anybody else and just walk away from it. She got exactly what she deserved. She's gonna walk in my shoes, you know, she's working 20 hours a week. She's lucky I was working 65 hour weeks. Yeah. That's crazy. And that's real, that's that's what's happening in America. A lot of politicians and media don't understand that, but that's the real world. Cuz it's super hard to get by and that's what people have to do to do to get by. And so, look, if you just hear the story, it might seem a little absurd throwing a burrito bowl really like 90 days, that's three months in jail. So now it's gonna be one month and two months of, of working part time in fast food. But that was a, you saw the video, that was a violent yep. action. I mean, if she hadn't blocked it, if the worker had and Emily hadn't blocked it, that was gonna, like he, she was gonna hit her square in the face. Mm -hmm. So and, and, and that's a serious assault. It is, and at a, Let's keep it real. This is a fine establishment. This isn't a Waffle House. Like, what are we doing here? Ah, <laughs> just kidding. Okay. And by the way, the uh, Gilligan also uh, saved taxpayers money because he's right. That way, the taxpayers don't have to pay for her food. Mm -hmm. She's actually serving others, uh, etc. So Thurston Howell is going to be pleased that he got to save some taxpayer money. I don't. I don't know what that reference is. <laughs> <laughs> Bart does, and he's hanging his head in shame. Thurston Howell's the rich guy in Gilligan's Island. Oh, that was his name. You yeah. know, I used to watch Gilligan's Island when I was a small child. Uh huh. Yeah. Did you, were you in the camp that thought the professor was hot? I was a small child, so probably <laughs> not. Uh, but I should go back and check because I might have changed my mind on that. <laughs> There was like the hot like Hollywood actress, right? Ginger, I think yeah, her name Ginger was. Yeah, and, Ginger uh, and Marianne. Marianne. And that's the, re the reason I said it about the professor is because that's the age old debate, Ginger or Marianne, right? That's what every guy gets oh, asked. Oh, yeah. Right, so, but you like, but for the women, you had Thurston Howell, who's like Joe Biden's age. <laughs> uh, you had a Gilligan, who was like three pounds. You had the skipper, who was 300 pounds. And so your only option was really the professor. The Gil but Gilligan had a great personality. Did he? <laughs> I don't remember, to be honest. I actually want to go back doofus. and watch. Man, shows back in the day really did rock. Okay, you got Three's Company, I Love Lucy, Gilligan's Island, Family Matters. Do you remember Family Matters? Of course, are you kidding me? It's a different love, same family. <laughs> you know, I watched. Are you kidding me? I watched every sitcom. Period. I used to watch. Our, like we say to our kids, oh, don't watch video games, don't watch too much YouTube and stuff. No, I'd sit there and I'd watch like Benny Hill. Uh, what was it, the Miller's thing? The the detective show that was so old, nobody even remembers it. Uh, you name any sitcom from the 80s, 70s, and the reruns, the reruns from the 70s, mm -hmm. 60s, etc. Because I grew up in the 80s, 90s, I'm watching all of them. Is it wrong to admit to enjoying Married with Children as a progressive? Oh Yeah, I, I watched Married with Children, enjoyed the hell but out of it. But we condemn it, right? Well, do we? Okay, so oh, I remember Barney Miller was the show that I was talking about that nobody watched. Oh, yeah, obviously, Barney yeah. Miller, um, everyone knows. So it's okay because Al Bundy turns out to be a, a progressive. So think so about it. Supported good Democrats in Ohio, where he's from. Okay, his name, real name is of course not Al Bundy, but um, how it's slipping. But he's a great actor. He is a great actor. Yeah, yep. Ed O'Neill. Ed O'Neill. That's it. I was thinking yes. Neil who, Neil who, and then it's right, Ed O'Neill. Uh, I once randomly saw him in, in a street in L.A., and he was like, "Nice." So he acknowledged <laughs> you. Yeah. That's nice. So that's good. God bless Ed O'Neill. Thanks for watching. If you become a member, you get to watch all this ad free, except for, of course, this ad. Still, hit the join button below.